Hi, I'm going to go through a demo here of using an AWS EKS cluster with Fargate and show you uh, deploying something into it, what it looks like, and then also what it can't do. So let me go ahead and start with setting up the cluster. Um, and this is just going to set up a cluster called EKS1 using Fargate, but also add in a manage node group. And we're just going to go ahead and let this go for a while. I'm going to go ahead and disappear while this is running. OK, everything is ready. Um, and when I said we created this with a uh, Fargate capabilities here, what we want to take a look at is what that actually meant. And it is that it created a Fargate profile in our cluster called FP default because we didn't tell it anything else uh, that has an ARN for AWS so it, uh, it's a role that pe uh, pods can uh, execute on that uh, in Fargate um, and it's going to use the namespaces default and cube system and it's going to go ahead and put anything that it can in default and cube system onto Fargate in this Fargate using this Fargate uh, profile default. So what we want to do is also allow some of our own workloads to do it to run on Fargate. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and create another Fargate profile. This one will not take very long. We're calling this Fargate profile FP Sock Shop. And that's going to be for the namespace Sock Shop, which is what we're going to deploy our sample app into. Okay, and now that's done. Um, let me take a look at this. All right, so we went ahead and we created a Fargate profile Sock Shop. Um, and it's for the namespace sock shop. And if I take a look at this one, now we look. Now we have two profiles: the default FP default, but we also have this FP sock shop. And so basically, this is just saying anything in namespace sock shop is going to go into Fargate. Now we could have also put selectors, uh, more selectors on this, like labels and stuff. But for now, we're just going to say everything in stock sock shop is going to be put on Fargate. And if I do kube control get nodes, we see we have some Fargate. And I said originally that I was going to create it with some uh, node groups, and I, I didn't set it up right. So I'll go ahead and I'll create those in just a minute. But we won't need them right now. We've got the Fargate profile set up, um, and I'm already in a directory here. If I just do an ls, um, I can see a bunch of files here. This is the uh, Weaveworks Sock Shop demo microservices app. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and apply that. And while that's applying, let's go ahead and watch this get set up here. Let these get created a little bit bigger. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, you can see they're all pending. Now this is going to take a few minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and disappear one more time. And we'll wait until it gets back to see what happens. All right, this is almost done here. Uh, what we're really waiting for now is it's waiting for a couple of the last pods to get ready. Um, but they're already running, so it's just waiting for those to check. Uh, let's take a look at what we got here. Um, if I was to look at the nodes here, let me go ahead and shrink this back down a little bit. Um, there we go. 
All right, so our get nodes here, we see that we've gotten a whole bunch of nodes. Before we only had two, right, these two that were seven minutes old. Now we have a bunch more. And basically what happens is every pod that gets deployed in Fargate gets deployed to its own node. They get spun up immediately on their own. Not immediately, it takes a second or two. Once they get spun up, it goes ahead and creates its own for it. Now there are some restrictions on these uh, because they are their own hosts um, and they're locked down pretty well, as we'll see in a few minutes. But you can see that it did spin up all those nodes. Um, we're waiting for these last couple to get ready. So let's just keep waiting and um, then we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at what it stood up. Okay, so everything is ready now. I have it all running. I'm going to pull up one more window here just so I can go ahead and do my port forwarding out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and port forward to the front end service of Sock Shop on 8850. All right, now if I bring over a window here, I go to localhost 8850. Boom, we've got the sock shop up and running. All right, that's really all there is to starting something with Fargate. We didn't have to do anything special, right? Everything was set to come up in Fargate uh, that went into this uh, namespace, and sure enough, it did. Um, and the app came up. All right, if I take a look at, let's just find one of these here. Um, Let's look at this top pod carts uh, B carts. Um. Oops. Oh, why is it doing that? B four. D4, FF, B, 5C, ZT, K6M. There we go. Okay. So, it took a while to come up. Let's see what else is in here. Um, scroll up towards the top. We see that it has a Fargate node got labeled with a Fargate profile. And that's really it. The Fargate scheduler was the one that went ahead and put it in place. So, yeah, nothing much different than if it was nor than it normally would have come up uh, when we weren't using Fargate. So, well, that's running. Let's or what well, we've done that. Let me go ahead and let's pull up an EKS. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and spin up the node groups. So let me come ahead, go ahead and do that, and we'll be back when that is up. All right. Well, now the. Uh, the node group is up, and let's go ahead and take a look at what we got node-wise. Right, we see we got our, all our Fargate nodes and some brand new uh, actual VMs. You know, EC2 instances here running. Um, you'll also notice nothing changed in the pods, right? The uh, Fargate profile gets checked only when we put the pods in. Um, so there's nothing to say, hey, move them out now that there's a node group available. Not that we would want that anyway. We'd want them to stay in, in Fargate. So the reason I stood the node group up, though, was because I'm going to do something that Fargate can't handle. Um, I'm going to go ahead, and I have already have installed Linkerd, which is a service mesh. Um, it doesn't really matter which service mesh you had. This could be Istio, uh, or it could just be using a, a CNI. Um, like Calico. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and I'm just double checking. We can see that 
Linkerd is installed and it can go ahead and it can get to the um, and it can get to our cluster. Um, it's just using kubectl to do it. Um, and so let's go ahead and let's install Linkerd in here. That's not going to change anything or break anything. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and install all the custom resource definitions that Linkerd has. And it tells us right there that we're then to go ahead and um, and do a Linkerd deinstall. Um, and it says, ooh, it needs to run as set proxy in it, run as root. So let me go ahead and do that. And there they go. It all gets installed very quick. Um, now Linkerd is installed in our repo, or in, I'm sorry, in our cluster. Um, it's going to go ahead and it's going to check, make sure everything's up and running. Um, and the big thing here is the no unschedulable pods. Uh, because of what a tool like this does, it actually is setting up some routing and for that it needs to get to the network. Um, and because it's getting to the network, um, it's using a privilege, it's in, it, you know, it's a privilege, uh, Linux privilege that we normally don't give out and we certainly don't give out on Fargate. So Fargate won't let it happen. But in this case, uh, because I have the um, Linkerd, uh, running on the node group. Let's check that out. Uh, what was the control plane? That where would be? You say it's linker. It's just linker D. I can go ahead and get those pods. Oops. Let's do the same thing. Let's see where they're running. And sure enough, we see they're running on our node group. So anyway, all up and running, wouldn't work if we were trying to do this on just Fargate, so we have to have a combination, but we notice our pods are still up and running fine on Sock Shop. We've got Linkerd installed, um, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is tell it to apply Linkerd to our uh, Sock Shop, um, and we're going to grab all deployments, we're going to inject Linkerd into it and apply, and that's all it takes. Again, this is just Linkerd just bases it off of kubectl. Um, it's going to go ahead and do that. You see all the injections, and a whole bunch of new pods show up. All right, and you just see they're sitting there and pending. So, what it's going to do is if we go ahead and we try to take a look at one of these pods and this is the new pod it's standing up there's the one that was already up and running it's been running for a few minutes but the one we just stood up that's replacing with that has the linker d uh, sidecar injected into it it says it can't Support, it's not supported on Fargate. Invalid security context fields. Capabilities added. Net admin and allow privilege escalation, which it needs to control the networking. Right? So just like I said. So we can't run Linkerd on there. We also can't run any Linkerd uh, sidecar pods uh, or any pods with Linkerd sidecars in them. So if we wanted to try to lock down the uh, networking, um, to say install mutual TLS, which is what Linkerd will do by default, uh, it won't run on Fargate. So let's just let this sit for a little while and figure out. It knows this, um, oh, it's not going to figure it out on its own. What I need to do is get rid of the Fargate profile because it keeps trying to reschedule it. Let me go ahead and get rid of that profile. And 
now when it tries to reschedule, it will find out that since we're in, even though we're in Sock Shop, it's not trying to put it on Fargate, so it should go to the node group. So let me go ahead and turn myself off. We'll let this take its time to do its thing. Okay, so what happened there is the scheduler realized that it was no longer forced to try to reschedule onto Fargate and saw that the node groups were there, so it just started rescheduling everything onto the node groups. Um, and if you look at what I did here, where I got the nodes, there are still two Fargate nodes running and our two uh, EC2 instances from the, from the uh, node group. And if I look at the cube system, because remember the FP default uh, Fargate profile, that's still there. Um, Core DNS was the two Fargate profile or the two Fargate nodes that were still running. Everything else is on the node groups. And everything's just about up and running. It's taking a little bit longer. You notice that there's a sidecar in most of these um, taking a little bit long to, to come up. Um, and just to wrap this up, right, again, you can't run the net admin or the allow privilege escalation um, containers on Fargate, so they couldn't be scheduled. We had to stand up a node group for it. That's going to happen anytime we're doing anything with CNI, with Linkerd, with Istio, with any type of service mesh, or anything that's going to try to lock down the networking. Um, just to kind of take one quick look at what Linkerd just got gave to us rather. Um, okay, we paid the cost, we may as well see what we got. I'm going to install this Linkerd Viz um, and let's just give Linkerd a check. Um, make sure the Viz extension is up and running. As soon as this check finishes up, we'll go ahead and we'll use something called Edges to take a look at the TLS that's running on it. There we go. Um, we're going to look at the deployments in Sock Shop. And this is all of, you can see it's all checked as secured. Um, we're allowing communication from Prometheus to each of those deployments, right? And then from between the deployments and the sock shop, it went ahead and allows sock shop to sock shop. That's it, all right? So we've gone ahead and set up mutual TLS just by installing Linkerd. Um, but we couldn't do it on Fargate. That had to happen on a node group. So hopefully that was helpful. Thanks a lot.